Good everyone, welcome to this video and today it's my review on the H39 Cambrone. Now I've just finished the uh, market distinction on this tank and to tell you the truth, I actually had a lot of fun driving this thing. Um, in one case, obviously as I mentioned in the um, cheetah video, I actually got four aces back to back. That was ace, 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 ace. Then obviously I encountered the cheetah and I was wasted instantly. But as many people knocked the French rank 1 tanks, they aren't as bad anymore, people. I can assure you that. So, let's go over the tank briefly. Go over its design philosophy. And then we'll get into armor and things like that. And then we'll get to my stats and the thing. So the H39 Cambro was designed, well, originally as the H35. And the H35, which we have in game, and I do have a talisman on it, so I will have to do a video on it at some point. Um, the H35 slash H39, and all the other tanks such as the R35, they were two-man tanks. France's design philosophy was because World War One had inflicted such high casualties on them, they didn't have many men to put in tanks. So they decided, okay, we can either have a a load of, well, a small amount of three to four to maybe even five man tanks, or we can have a lot of two man tanks. Now there's good and bad decisions with this. First of all, having two man tanks means the gunner slash commander is overworked, but you can have more tanks. However, if you go with a, let's say a contemporary design such as five man crew with a Panzer III, the crewman load is evenly spread out, which is the more suitable part, shall we say. Now, I don't know where the name Cambrone came from. I think it's part of a, um, a, well, shall we say, a tank group. Not really sure. Obviously, I've added some personalization to the tank. Lady Luck, because you'll be surprised how many shots this thing can bounce. Then obviously we reply, because this gun's actually pretty punchy at, at close range. Not long range, but we'll leave it at that. Add a jerry can on the back, a couple of gas masks, and even put a hat on the back, because I wanted to. But as I was saying about the history, um, the H39 started life as the H35, which I will get up for you now. And the H35 basically carried the same gun as the Renault FT-17, which was the first actual tank. As in one we would call a tank. Obviously, the Ward's first tank was the Mark I, but the Ward's first proper tank was the H or the FT-17. And obviously, after World War I, they had a lot of these FT-17s lying around, with a load of um, guns inside them, ammunition to spare, coax machine guns, etc. So they decided, instead of bidding all these guns, they would use them as infantry support guns. Now, for what I've been able to find, the SA-18 L21, which is on this um, H-35, it fired both APCR, AP, and HE. Obviously, we don't have the AP round anymore because it sucks, and we don't have the HE, so you have only stuck with APCR. But during the time of the French, or well, the, um, the Battle of France, it was decided that the H-35 was a bit undergunned, so they decided to go with the SA-38L-33, which is better, but it certainly isn't the best anti-tank gun. It does the job, and it has a good reload rate, but in real life, it would not have a very good reload rate. The poor sod inside the commander, he's got to turn the turret, load the shell, fire the shell, load the machine gun, fire the machine gun, spot his targets, sight his targets in the sight, aim, adjust to fire obviously, fire, and then obviously do it all again. It's a lot of work for one man to do. And to be honest, if I had a choice, I would not want to serve in this tank during French or World War II. I'd probably want to be just a driver because he doesn't have a lot to do. Maybe he passes him the ammo there because that's right next to the driver. The driver gets a nice engine to play with, a 120 horsepower, I think it's a Renault engine. And, um... Personally, it feels like a diesel with how much this thing actually shifts, because it's actually pretty fast. Not the fastest, but with a top speed of about 23 miles an hour, it's not too bad. 
But you only get 120 horsepower and the tank weighs 12.1 tons, so you get just under 10 horsepower per ton. You'll get up most hills that you'll see, it'll do the job, and well, this tank can actually take quite a beating. I have two replays that I'm going to show of the tank. Obviously, today we're showing the one where I actually end up in a mixed battle and I have to fight a B1 bit. I know what you guys are probably thinking. How the fuck did you manage it? Like, how did you well, I didn't actually survive this battle because of artillery and noobs luck. But I managed to kill a B1 bit, and Dark Angel thought I was chatting bullshit. But um, a little bit more about the history of this tank. Um, Germany captured several of these and pressed them into service. Obviously, I don't think you'd want to buy French premium or the German premium in this tank. But it would be nice to see H39s if you can out of H39s. Finally, I'm going to go briefly over the gun. 48mm of pen at 10 meters, not bad. But past 500 meters, you will look at a pen and M1340. And briefly, armor plating. The armor is actually pretty strong with about 40 millimeters across the board. Obviously, German 20 millimeter will cut right through. But one piece of advice I'm going to give to you: angle to your right hand side, not your left. So your right hand side is obviously more sloped. So this side will bounce anything. Your turret will also bounce anything pretty much. Your driver support is still a weak spot, so you've got to bear this in mind. Maybe put a bush over it or something, I'm not sure. But this is practically impenetrable. But why not angle to your left hand side? Well, you can see here there's a rather large welding here. This is where the, um, obviously the turret ring is connected to the tank. And obviously the body of the tank has been welded around. Well, technically it's cast, so it's not really welded. But... This is a massive weak spot, so I don't advise angling to your left hand side. Always angle to your right. Okay, I've gone on for a bit too much, as I usually do. Let's get into the battle, shall we? And uh, well, let's just say Dark Angel thought I was lying about this battle. Mate, you're about to see excellence. And I made a joke during this battle saying, French boy OP. This tank is not overpowered, people. That I will say. It is not a powerful tank. It's not a bad tank. But it's not a good tank. It's a pretty mediocre tank. I like it. But it's certainly something I would not want to choose as my first vehicle that I would play at rank 1. Now James spawns in a... because James Prawn 3 is actually in this battle as well. He was with me. Um, he brought out his Squeezy Boy. Now Squeezy Boys are absolute fucking nightmares to this thing. However, the French can team up with the Germans. So if you've got a squad mate, get him about a scruff of the neck and say to him, you're bringing Germany, you bastard. Because <laughs> then that'll take the most dangerous guns out of action for you. The Allied guns will still deal with you reasonably well. The BT-5 can punch right through you. But obviously, if you angle to your right-hand side, you should be good. For the most part. They can still get you through your turret front, but your turret front has a bit of sloping. Obviously, there's Jane with his... Um, his squeezy boy. He has a pretty good game, but he dies way more than me. Because <laughs> it's James. Naturally, he dies more. And while it appears he's copying, or copying Sturmling's design idea from Bowtime Gaming's channel when they did a video on that thing. At the moment, a tank is pushed into the C point. I believe it was a BT-5. So I decide, right, I'm going to flank right. Flak Panzer 38 mows down a BT-5 that rushed the cap for some bloody reason. And now you can hear James' little car as he propels forward with Hans ready to man that 20mm. But unfortunately, James' adventure is going to come to a bit of an unexpected end. I say to him, right, I'm just going to keep watch over here. See if I can see anything. I spot the AMC. Now in a gunfight, 
between an AMC and a H39, it's no contest. The H39's got this. But, as you can tell, the gun does take a bit of getting used to, and obviously I'm hitting the side armor of the AMC, so it's not doing any damage. Again, I don't know how that didn't penetrate, but it doesn't matter. I don't get the assist, because obviously I didn't do any damage. And there we go, an SU-5 has just nailed the Flak Panzer. James at this point gets brutally bummed by a squeezy, well a T-60. The AMC attempts to try and battle with my tank, but in a gunfight between a H-39 and an AMC, it's no bloody contest. First kill. But yes, I recommend... Um, not driving the French if you're not a very skilled driver. The French tanks do take quite a bit of skill to master. And there's the T60. For some reason he keeps charging me, no idea why. Even with his APTR rounds, he'd have to go for the turret ring. So I just said to him, right, James, T60's dealt with. So he comes back in his Panzer II duck. And we are coming up to the moment where two B1 Bizzers are pushing the C point. Yes, not one, but two two of the bastards. <laughs> As if one wasn't scary enough. But yes, as I complete these market distinctions, I'll be more than happy to do premium reviews. I've still got a Hargo Commander, the, uh, um, the M1340 Series 2. I finished the M2A4 a couple of weeks ago. I think I still have... Um, well, I have the T26 premium to do. And there's the T26, speak of the devil. No idea how they didn't penetrate, but it's a loss. Now you can see, I'm angling to my right-hand side, and he bounced off there. And again, angling to my right, he bounced off. Trust me, guys, this will save you. I am not joking. And here comes the thing that went, that made me go, oh shit, here comes the B1. And it is quite clear he loves bullying the puppies. Well, this puppy's got a mean bite. Let's just say that. Now, I'm not certain if this ever took place in real life, but a H-39 duking out with a B-1 Biz, there would be no hope in hell for the H-39, but the B-1 has a couple of weak spots, and I tried to exploit that. But he has backup in the form of a Panzer III. I bounce off the Panzer III because I rush my shot, and here comes the big bastard himself. Put one through the turret ring, damaging the beast. I shoot that 75 because I'm anxious about that gun. I start backing up and, and then side right turret ring, and down she goes. B1 biz destroyed. Obviously, now me and the Panzer III are about to have a little fun fest. For some reason, he starts driving like an idiot. I don't know how that did kill his driver, but at this point, I. Didn't mean to shoot the barrel, but I shot the barrel anyway. And I decided, right, well, it's probably a 3F, because I didn't know at the time. I'll go for the barrel. And then I dealt with him accordingly. There's your ace. And it's at this point where I'm saying to James, French boy OP. There you can see a SU5-1. And I finish him off with a 37. Job done. Six kill. However, we are soon coming to the end of the H-39's life. Not only is it said it's big bad brother and several other tanks, but I'm sorry to say, but this adventure is soon to come to an end. However, in the second replay, it's a lot different. Now you may have noticed that there is no actual cosmetic um, additions to the tank. This battle took place before I put them on, so. That's why. Obviously, I'm moving up to the right and flank, and I'm thinking, okay, I can support the team a bit, see if I can cover this right and flank, because I've had quite a few enemy tanks coming down here. But me and James was joking during this battle, French boy OP, at H39 OP, and, well, it's not. It's not overpowered. I will show you, if if you guys have ever struggled to deal with French tanks, I'll show you the easiest weak spot of your life. 
Okay, so here comes a M22 Locust. He is going to be the one who actually kills me, but not how you would expect. Bit of a spoiler alert there, guys. And well, James watching my back, obviously, because he's a good lad. He's watching me back. And there you can see a BT-5, and I'm thinking, right, well, I'm angled to my right-hand side. James takes him out with his Panzer two. And I believe at this point, this is where the Locust drops artillery on us. Now, in a gunfight, the M22 Locust would butcher a H39, but not when you reverse outside on. I mean, what was the point of that, pal? But the little shit had dropped artillery. And it hit me right on the engine deck. Lucky little bastard, is all I'll say. But hey, what a run for the H39. So obviously, I'll now go over my opinion about the tank, whether you should get it or not, or even drive the one in the tree, because it's exactly the same as in the tree. It's just got the Canberra name. So overall, I'm actually thinking rank 1 French tanks are actually bearable now. But, and it's a big but, there are a couple of stinkers still. Once you get to rank 2 French tanks, obviously you unlock the H35 and the FCM36. Don't bother with those. Obviously, I'll have to do a video on the H35 at some point. Um, I'm dreading that. But thank God I'm doing it in my nation order that I am. Otherwise, I'd be shooting myself right now. But um, the tank itself, if you really need a French rank 1 premium tank, I think you've got it here, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great tank when you drive it correctly. If you drive it wrong, it will punish you for it, and you will die. But this tank is really good in the right hands, and I know that's going to set off a lot of alarm bells for people. But if you drive the French rank 1 carefully, you can actually bloody do well in it. But anyway, let's return briefly to the hangar so I can go over my stats of the vehicle and weak spots for the vehicle, if you're ever fighting this thing. So if you ever fight in the French Cambron, obviously gun matter is pretty debatable. You, if you shoot right here, it's only 25mm and it'll go straight through and kill the gunner. That's quite a hard shot to go for though. Another quite good spot to go for is the turret ring. In places it's only 35 to 40 millimeters thick. It's not as tough as the rest of the hull, and it's quite an easy weak spot to get because it's quite a large turret ring. The driver's hatch is practically flat. This is a good spot to go for because it's right behind the driver, or right in front of the driver, I should say. Another spot if you've got an explosive round is the cupola, with it being 49 to 43 millimeters thick in places, with it escalating obviously as you go up. This is a good weak spot for a Panzer III F to go through. Turret front is reasonably tough against Italian tanks, but you've got to bear in mind they can still go through it. So finally, I'm going to go over my stats. 40 deaths, 168 ground target kills, 8 air kills. Obviously, the second replay I'll do, you'll see in a couple of days. Um, that is going to be done accordingly because, again, Dark Angel thinks I was chatting shit because it's a French rank one. Like I say, though, I think the AMR is a good tank. The P70 is a good AA. The R38, or the R35 has this gun, so it's not much of a difference. It's just got weaker armor. And obviously the H39 and the tree is exactly the same as this one, so... But AMC 34YR is your reserve. Don't even bother with it, people. Stick with the H39 as your reserve. If you drive it how I did, you're going to do just fine in it. But the AMC, God help you. Especially nowadays. Back in the day when this thing had 54. It was great. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the H39 Cambron. Really enjoyed this tank. Um, didn't think I'd like it, but with a 4 to 1 kill death ratio... I'm well impressed with it, and to think I was barely imagining a 1-to-1 one -one in the French tanks back in the day. But, as I said, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, because I've seen there might be a couple of ladies that play Warthunder, I don't bloody know. 
Um, angle to your right hand side, and you'll be just fine. Obviously, just watch for that driver's port, weep spot. And there are welding, well, there's welding right here to watch out for, but then it's cast, so. Anyway, I'll let you guys off. Hope you enjoyed today's review, and I will catch you all on the next one.